Hey guys, welcome back to another Wood Brew video. In this week's video, we're building a really cool, interesting, using lots of different techniques, chest set, very overkill, but it's a cool project we've been wanting to test out a few different things on. We're gonna start by letting down the X-Carve. If you didn't see this video last week or the week before, go back and check it out, it's pretty cool. I'll show you how it works. And you wanna show them? I'll show them. You show them. Okay, so got this little pin counterweight system check it out even added this little guy for the laptop pretty nifty little thing this is the inventables x carve they're sponsoring this week's video so if you're interested in checking out this machine there's links in the description below we also have templates for this project so if you don't have a cnc machine but you'd still like to check it out you can do that as well. This makes it a whole lot easier. Also, we'd like to thank Total Bolt for sponsoring this week's video. So all the resin and dyes and cool things that we use later in the video from Total Bolt. You can check that out in the link in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. quickly explain kind of the process here in a visual sense so that when you're watching this being cut you understand what we're doing exactly so I'm over here in SketchUp currently and I created this model of what exactly it is we're cutting so you can see this is multiple layers of quarter inch MDF here that are going to stack together these are the pieces individually and then this is kind of what the final model we want to look like is so it's going to get wrapped around with these nicer pieces of wood once it's done and filled with epoxy. Here I am exporting things as an SVG so that I can use it on this machine. But the reason I did it this way and not just cut out of a solid piece of wood is I tried that on the small scale here and I learned a few things. First of all, can't pour the epoxy this thick. I poured it about three quarters of an inch thick in one spot and that was way too much and it just went crazy. So I'm gonna have to pour in quarter inch step pours, but also this took a really long time cutting this out. And I don't like how there's different colors in here because of the plywood, and that's what I was initially gonna use. And it just looks kind of weird. And I think this MDF is actually gonna look nicer. So we're gonna cut this out in pieces and then glue the pieces together. It'll be so much faster than this. And I think it's just a better way to go. So we're doing it that way. Molly says I didn't do a good job of explaining. So. Let me back up a little bit. This, what we're trying to create here is ocean topography sort of look. So when you look at this end model, you'll see that as you look through this bluish resin and look down into the chessboard itself, it will appear to be an ocean floor and give some depth to the board and hopefully look pretty cool. Good. Good. I didn't say you didn't explain it well, I just said you need to add one thing. To get the X car ready, we're going to use a down cut bit from Bits and Bits. We are using a handful of router bits from them in this project and they will all be listed down in the description. Using MDF, we cut out each layer one by one. Each of the four layers took about 10 minutes each to cut out, so not too bad. We added in taps and easel, which is the inventable software to keep the pieces getting cut out in place and not having them move or get loose when finishing that cut. These come in handy a ton. When the pieces were finished getting cut and sanded, we added in another piece for the bottom. 
Layer by layer, we added a glue to the back and pin nailed them down to the one below. Hey, what'd you do? So I just got done, you know, gluing this all up. It looks nice, right? Gonna let it sit overnight. Gonna pick it up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, miscalculated length of nails. So for some reason in my head, two of these were one inch. Two of these are half an inch. So there's at least half of an inch of brad nail, pin nail, in the workbench right now. So let's hope I can get this up. Well, that was anticlimactic. That was... <laughs> okay, well, it's not too bad. I'll just bend those over. They'll be fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. There were still a little bit of the tabs on the sides, so we ran the entire board through the table saw to clean up all four sides. After that, we super glued boards around the entire thing so the epoxy will harden in a rectangular shape. We sealed all the edges with the same super glue and with some heavy duty tape as well. So I have the entire thing set up here getting ready to pour the first layer of epoxy. There's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six layers of epoxy. We need to wait roughly four to six hours in between each layer of epoxy. It's very important that we do it in step pours so the epoxy doesn't overheat. We're also going to be using some of this powdered pigment here so this is the blue green pigment it's kind of this like if we're thinking about water tones it's kind of more um brackishy like i don't know caribbean-ish kind of and then there's also so many other different colors they have this is the other color caribbean blue i guess it's technically more caribbean but i kind of like this more greenish in there so we're going to go with that and this we'll use later so we're gonna mix a little bit of this with Total Boat's high performance epoxy resin. We have pumps on here. So uh, one pump of the high performance epoxy resin and one pump of the slow hardener. This is a two to one ratio here and these pumps do that for you automatically. It does take a little bit longer, but it's worth it. Okay, so have this set up. We have tape and everything. We also use some super glue that uh, to seal up kind of the edges, hopefully. Hopefully this goes smoothly and it doesn't leak everywhere. We have our silicone mat down. We're just gonna give it a go. So I'm gonna be filling in just these lowest areas, but also on this first coat, I'm gonna take a brush with whatever's extra, and I'm gonna brush it around the edges of everything to hopefully seal it before we pour the heavier amounts later. So let's do it, let's see what happens. It is now the middle of the night, so there's an awkward angle here. 
I'm about to do pour number two. The thing to keep in mind is you want to make sure the epoxy is still a little bit tacky. If it fully hardens, you'll need to sand it first before you add the second coat. And you'll have to wait for it to like really harden, so overnight. So yeah, already mixed it up. Let's go ahead and pour in pour number two. I mixed way too much the first time and not enough this time. So mix some more up and then pour it in. So I've actually found that the perfect amount of time is around three hours to wait in between each layer. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't come back at like 3 a.m. and then 6 a.m. last night. So this kind of went ahead and hardened up a bit. And I let it harden completely overnight, so it's about like 10 a.m. So it's been a good, say like 12 hours-ish since the last coat. So I came back and I scuffed it up with some sandpaper. It looks kind of cloudy because of that, but once we pour the next layer in, that's gonna clear right up. But just to show you why, the reason you have to do that is because if you pour it while it's still kind of like in a gel state, real tacky, then there's gonna be a chemical bond between each layer. But if you wait for it to harden, like I did, then you need to make a mechanical bond by roughing up the surface so that the epoxy has something to grab onto. It's probably not super necessary because this is more for display, but it could cause delamination and other problems, especially in more of a structural piece, say like a, an epoxy river table or something like that. So it's just good practice to do it this way. So I'm gonna mix up some more, pour the next layer, and then I have one, I have two layers after that, and I'm gonna do those every three-ish hours. The next day it was time to carve again, but this time we are carving out the squares. sanded out the bottoms of the squares to get rid of any little ridges and cleaned them out with a brushing thinner to wipe out all the dust. We obviously wanted a different color epoxy for these squares so we decided to try out the black mixed with the Caribbean blue and in order for it to get dark enough you need just a little bit more than you think. We let that cure for about a day and a half and then we could sand it all down. Dylan. <laughs> we started with 150 grit on the belt sander and worked our way up to 800 on the orbital sander.
it's time to come back inside and cut off the MDF sides to reveal the epoxy. The top edges were a little sharp so we ran over them with a 16th inch roundover bit. Thank you Jackman for that tip. We love the look of seeing the sides so much that we did away with making a wooden border and chamfered the bottom edges to give the board kind of like a floating look. I don't know, but it looks really cool. Now it's back outside to finish sanding with 1200, 1600, and a 2000 grit sandpaper. I'm just mixing up some total boat penetrating epoxy. We're gonna use that on this bottom side here. We kind of changed up the design a bit and I wanna make sure that this MDF is good and sealed and then we ever have issues with that. So we're gonna start with the penetrating epoxy, do several coats and then we'll do some final sanding once that's all complete. So I've got everything sanded up to 2000 grit here. It's still like, I wouldn't say cloudy, but it's not shining, which is what we want. And it will get a little shinier when we put kind of like a, our last bit of finish on there. But I'm going to try to use some of this green polishing compound. We don't actually have a buffer. So we're just going to use a piece of cloth here on an orbital sander, see what happens. Ended up just using a piece of leather on the bottom of the orbital sander and that worked really well. It's pretty much to completely clear again and shiny and glossy. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna apply a little bit of furniture wax over it. That's gonna be enough of a protectant to hopefully help keep it from scratching and dulling, but also not enough of a protectant that it's not difficult to then rebuff if we need to in the future and get it brought back up to a shine. Because I have a feeling that with a lot of repeated use on this, it's probably going to, I don't know, dull a little bit. So I want something that's super minimal and easy to fix and remove later. may regret this, but it seems like a good idea right now. While we're letting that wax dry before we actually buff it off, I wanna talk about the chest pieces. I'm sure a lot of you are gonna be wondering about those. We actually ordered these silicone molds. I think this is silicone. Uh, but anyway, this is Lewis number one, the oldest known European chest set, I do believe. So this is a, a mold of that. And we have it kind of in these this little board that we made with holes so that they can sit in there and then we can pour whatever material we want in to cast them. So you can see we started experimenting. We still have a lot of pitting going on and there's issues up here at the crown, especially on this guy here. And we, we're having trouble with it, which is why we're going to make a separate video about it. So these pieces will come out along with a little box for them in a separate video. We've been using this uh, water putty, rock hard water putty. We're having trouble getting it mixed up 
well enough or the bubbles out of it to make it a fine enough detail. But once it is set, it's really, really hard stuff and really nice looking. So we are gonna try to make this work. Uh, we actually did some half resin, half uh, rock hard wood putty stuff. Basically we took one of these, broke it in half, put it back in the mold and then poured it. And it does look cool, but I don't think we're gonna do that. I really like the look of these. And this is kind of cool. This is like kind of sand looking, you know, for the water. I don't know. Maybe these would be the two colors. I'm not sure. We're going to figure that out in the next video. That is going to do it for this week's video. Like Dylan said, we are making the chess pieces in the next video. But thank you so much to Inventables and Total Boat for sponsoring this week's video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And we will see you in the next one.